Hey guys, this is Coach Chris. Welcome to my channel where we break down international level fights for strategies and tactics that you can use in your own matches. However, I did get a special request that this time uh, if we're going to break down what makes the difference between a novice, beginner, intermediate, advanced, and elite level fighter. So I, in a grand production of things, I have posted it here on Canva using stock images and some stuff borrowed from the internet to explain my points. So without further ado, let's get into it. For those of you who don't know me, I was ranked uh, on the Philippine national team for eight years. I, my highest rank ever achieved was ranked 23 in the world. And usually on this channel, I break down fights for strategies and tactics. But like I said, today we're going into what makes each, uh, what skills and techniques you need for each class and what you need to do to move up. So the very beginning, we have the novice. Novice is still learning how to do stuff, right? He's still crafting his first weapon. You can tell he has nothing built yet. He's just got an apron and a hammer. He's still learning about distance control, meaning his footwork. Like This is actually very overlooked now, his footwork. Um, learning how to move around, dodge distance, what distance is safe, etc. He's learning about timing, um, when to throw a kick, when not to throw a kick, what is safe, what is not safe. And then he's learning about, like I said, distance. How far can someone be? Uh, without actually hurting me or anything like that. So that's the novice. He's still, he's getting in there. He's getting his legs wet. He's getting his feet wet. Then we have the, the beginner. The beginner is still learning these things. They're a little bit more solid now, right? And he has his first weapon. He's scoring with something and it's this little wooden spear. These, these guys. He's got his little wooden spear and he's ready to use that wooden spear and like He's just really happy to use it because he's got like the one round kick, right? That's starting to land. Oh, praise God, we got we got one kick landing. Okay, so that's that. I'd say that's the beginning. You got about one weapon, maybe two. Two is already borderline. You're starting to learn more stuff because in order to land two weapons, you need to have more of an understanding of distance, timing, uh, and reach. Right. So, moving to the intermediate guy, we have the same thing. He's mastery now. He has a little bit more understanding. A little bit overall mastery of his timing his distance and reach which enables him to have more upgraded weapons he's upgraded from the the wooden spear to the bronze spear so maybe it was that round kick the round kick now isn't floppy it's very tight it's strong it's fast and in addition he's got some other stuff now he's got a katana and a bow so intermediate i'll, I'll generally say intermediate fighters have about one to three weapons pretty well refined they can use in multiple situations you know the bows for long range the spear is for medium range or you know a little bit closer than a bow and then a sword for in close fighting and they're pretty good about um when when and how to use this stuff and they do decently with it right they got one to three weapons they can rely on and an important distinguishment between the beginner and the immediate is because the intermediate has crafted more weapons he can still start bringing certain situations to his opponent he's starting to learn how to bring the fight to his opponent properly where he's forcing an environment however that environment still has many holes so what's the difference between an intermediate and an advanced well advanced if we're going back to the basics because these are the most important timing distance and reach or distance manipulation and reach the advanced guy has all of this and it's it's this is like master this is not even second thought anymore this is just stuff built into the defense mechanisms already right and so the advanced player also has more usable weapons so it's like not one to three he's sitting around four or five maybe even more but generally around four or five really really strong weapons and it's not like his four or five weapons are on the same level as the intermediate guy his weapons are now upgraded from the intermediate guy so now instead of a bone arrow he's got a sniper rifle he's got the tank and then for in close fighting, he becomes John Wick. Like that's it. Let's just say that's his forte. He's super good with the pistol up close, and that's where he's he's trying to make that situation happen. And so yeah, like long range, this is still deadly. I wouldn't want to fight a guy with a sniper rifle. You get closer, you realize, dude, this guy has tank armor, so that's harder to fight. And then somehow you're able to get him out of the tank. Right now you're in the clinch. Then you have to fight John Wick. So it's like okay, so this guy's game is like again pretty pretty solid. And so, like I said, he has about four to five strong weapons that are upgraded from the intermediate. So if you take an advanced guy who's doing a cut kick and an intermediate guy who's doing a cut kick, the advanced guy is going to have a more refined cut kick. Like that's, he's just been working on the weapons longer. So they're more refined, more forged, etc. 
then the most elite level fighter the difference between the most elite i'd say and the uh advanced is well one both of these guys have the distance timing and reach figured out you know there might be a little bit more distance manipulation because at every level in order to gain more weapons you need to have that more mastered but the main thing and i've selected these pictures very carefully so these are very scientifically based move over the very elite players are almost like neo in a sense this can kind of bleed into more advanced but the reason i have neo here stopping the bullets is because they've seen the they've been sparring for so long they've seen the attack so many times that essentially it looks like they're standing still and they can stop the attacks because they've already seen it like that it's i um it's hard for me to teach sometimes but like in the clinch against especially like intermediate level fighters people who, whose game isn't revolved around the clinch game um is like i can tell just by the way a knee is coming up in the clinch if it's going to the head or not to the head it's only when you're really advanced or like at the elite level where people are manipulating the way the way the knee is coming out in the, for for the kick to 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 like almost play rock paper scissors like oh this one came out straight uh and went to the head so this time i'm gonna go straight but this time to the body like people in the advanced and elite categories manipulate the ways their knee is coming up in the clinch in order to, to get around this kind of a situation because most advanced to elite level, level players have been sparring for so long they've seen everything like they know a front leg knee raise at distance is probably going to be a cut kick like that's nine times out of ten and they don't even have to think about it it just it just looks like they're blocking like we take in done for a second but the guy who's fighting um i think right after i stopped fighting or around the same time I was fighting, 2018, 2017. That like whole guy's game was, I'm going to block your 5-6 kick attack. Block, 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 block. You're tired? Good. Here here you are in the clinch. I'm going to kick you once. That's two points for me, zero points for you. You can go back to distance and try again, and I'm just going to sit here and block everything. Like That was his entire game, and he became number two in the world. Um, so at a certain point, you it just seems like the elite level fighters have seen everything, that they have to like do crazy stuff. Uh, to, to score or they have to be in the fight for a long long time like when will smith or not will smith when neo's fighting agent smith right like in the in the third matrix it wasn't until neo started getting tired that smith started landing some stuff it's because they have to fight 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 and then stuff starts getting in the initial attacks don't really do much anymore next um if you guys don't watch naruto this is all actually one conscious person um except for this chick but it's each different person here has different weapons and so at the elite level they have like s tier not like a class like s tier level weapons and they have multiple of them and it's it's like before like they upgraded from the elite weapons now they're s tier the upgrade amount isn't that much but they're able to use them in much more variety of situations and so that's why that's why i have paint on here because yeah, he's got a lot of weapons. Each one of these things do diff have different powers, and you have to figure out number one which one you're fighting, and then how to get around it. And then you have to remember that it's an S tier level weapon, so it's like it's it's hard to get around. Next, I have uh, Beerus and Goku because the level of physicality necessary to run that kind of performance is extremely high. I think last time I had checked, which was several years ago, Taekwondo is the seventh hardest sport. To train for it in the Olympics, the seventh hardest because it demands a lot of power endurance, and it's not like we're doing one fight and we go home. You do all the fights in one day, and I think now you do like all of them except for the semifinal fights, and then the semifinal and final fights are the next day after your adrenaline is gone and you're tired and you're sore. Like that's it's really not. You have to train for like five, six, seven fights. So the amount of physicality necessary to compete at the level and to keep pressure on, which I'm going to show you on this next little picture, is immense. Next, because I'm a Naruto fan, I had to throw this in here. The biggest difference between like an intermediate and advanced and an elite level fighter is the intermediate will try and force a little bit of their game or environment on an opponent. An advanced person is pretty good at doing that but there's still some holes that the elite level players exploit the elite level fighters have almost no holes in that game like if you watch panic pack it's hard to fight her because she has an answer for every answer like it's like okay she does a cut this is generally what's good against the cut 
every single one of those scenarios that you could throw at her has an answer. Like she has a legitimate scoring way to handle what you're about to throw at her. So it's like not only do you have to get around her scoring technique, you have to throw the counter and hope she's not already throwing the counter to your counter. And so that's why I got a Susano up here because that's an, it's supposed to be impenetrable armor. And that's how it is with a lot of other uh, players. So for example, uh, these guys are also like massive Titan, huge people. And so when they're fighting, you can see like the ocean waves are, are ginormous and whatnot, because when you're going against an elite level person, they force environment on you. And so uh, the first time I had Spartan Master go, I don't know any of his weapons. I had never sparred him for the first time. And I could tell by the way he's moving, he's, he's just reading what I'm doing. He's just taking in information. And so I felt like, personally, it feels like you're playing chess against someone but you can't see where his pieces are but he can see your pieces like that's essentially terrifying and sure enough second round we like I, I thought i got him like maybe once the first round we bow we take a break we go back and he opens up with a round kick to my dome and he gets me because he, he figured that out already like that's he's forcing environment and so another example of that is for example is uh inky done is environment is you can kick him he's, he's gonna turtle up and then kick you after there's also um, the Iranian, it's not Husseini, it's a, a, shoot, I forgot his name. But essentially his whole game is he's gonna stand there and he's gonna cut you in place and he doesn't move back because his single leg strength is so strong. So you're essentially fighting against a brick wall the whole time. Like he doesn't move back and that wall has a spike or his cut kick or whatever is gonna come out and get you. Um, same thing with Sinden uh, where he's relenting and they're, the, all of GB are relenting in their cut kick game until uh, and you have to try and answer that. And uh, what's his name? Dehun, really good at footwork pressure, sucking you into attacking and then kicking. He's like forcing environment on you. Uh, Jun So Bay, same thing. He's gonna cut kick from your outside and then you're gonna have to fight him in the clinch the whole time. And he's fighting that in close environment. He's forcing that in close environment on you. And with each of these people, even though they're forcing environment on you, there isn't a hole really like for Junso, Junso Bay, because I watch that guy a lot because I'm a big fan. When he's forcing game, like the only time you would be able to get him is on the outside. But the way he cuts into the cut variations already answer a lot of what you could answer. Like his the the game is very like complete for these people. So another one is Panic Pack. When I was watching Panic Pack, I was like, okay, against this kind of open like cut like this, I'd punch. And sure enough, one of the next iterations, someone tried to punch. And they tried to punch, and she wrapped her leg behind the punch and still hit her in the back of the head. And I was like, well, fuck. Like, what are you supposed to do after that? You have to follow up and hope that on the second or third or fourth defense that your attack on your second, third, or fourth attack is better than her second, third, or fourth defense. And so that's that's kind of the big difference is, like, at the advanced level of game, the weapons are more refined. Or the, not the advanced, sorry. The elite level of game, I'd say the weapons are way more refined. And the, they're able to force environment on their opponents. Uh, advanced is you have weapons that are almost like just maybe maybe same tier, maybe a little bit less, but they're more holes when you're trying to force environment against each other. So a reason I have this picture specifically because it's like two advanced or elite level fighters fighting each other, trying to force environment on each other. This was a little bit more fun one for me, guys. Uh, I'll, I'll have a actual fight breakdown soon and uh, until then i hope this was helpful if you want more videos like this let me know and i'll make them